All right, what's up, YouTube? Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to do a uh, lens flare effect. Uh, it's on After Effects. You actually do not need the uh, optical flares plugin to do this. I'll show you how to do it without it afterwards. But um, I apologize if you hear some noise, background noise. Uh, our lawnmower guy is uh, doing his thing right now. But uh, so yeah, I'll jump right in. Uh, this is what the effect looks like in the end. So go ahead and play this. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm in <clears throat> my new project, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the, f uh, the footage that I want to use. And we're going to double click it so that we can set our in and out points from now. So I'm going to make it look like he's already driving, so I'm going to go ahead, maybe do about here, set my end point, and wait till he walks off frame and go to our out point. So that's our out point. And now we'll take our footage, drag it down here to make a new composition. And yeah, that's what we got. That's our thing. So um, now what we're going to want to do next is uh, I have my workspace. Make sure your workspace is set to uh, something motion tracking. Just make sure that your tracker panel right here is, uh, is checked so that you can have the panel over here because it's not going to show up. And that drove me crazy when I started uh, doing After Effects. I didn't know how that worked. So um, we're going to go ahead and click Track Motion. Uh, motion Source is this footage that we have. Uh, current tracker, tracker one, transform. <laughs> yeah, so don't mess with this stuff. This is it's set pretty well. And then we're gonna want to go ahead and here and just take our tracking point and position it over whatever you wanted to track. So I wanted to track this light right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it here. And I'm gonna make my searching my initial searching box uh, pretty big because I know it's gonna be moving a lot. It's good because it's a fast moving car, so it's gonna be moving a lot. So our track will go crazy if we don't if we don't properly do that. Um, now, yeah, I think that's that's about where I want the light. Maybe a little bit more to here. Do I want the light? This black dot is where I want the main flare to come from. So wherever you want your flare to go from, uh, track that point. And we're gonna go ahead. It's a little bit bigger because I know later in it, it moves a lot. And now uh, press analyze forward, and that will start tracking your uh, footage for you. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do that and I'll uh, get back to you once it's done tracking. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, I haven't finished analyzing the whole footage yet because it already messed up. But um, what had happened is if you see right here, as we go th forward through the, uh, through the frames, it, the track actually messes up right here. It goes back, it jumps back a frame. So I'm going to go ahead to here. I'm going to go to the frame where it messes up. Go to our track point under our video. Delete all of these keyframes afterwards because all those are messed up. And then I'm going to go ahead and reset our tracking, our tracker point. Oops. Reset our tracker point to the right position here. And now that it's back in the right position, we're going to go ahead and uh, let it track. Analyze forward again. So that's what happens if it messes up. You have to manually set it back again. So yeah, I just thought I should put that on video, let you guys know. So yeah, that's about where I wanted it to be. So it's forward. Now here, it does go off screen here for a second. For a quick, quick second, it goes off screen. So what you have to do for this, for something like this, is you're gonna wanna go ahead to the part where it stops tracking again. Uh, and you're gonna want to see this point right here. You're gonna wanna leave this point in the middle here. Where you want wherever your source is that you want the you want to leave your point there, and you're gonna take these boxes. Oops, you're gonna want to take these boxes, and move. Okay, move the box to another point that stays in the footage. So I'm gonna do it here. This is a high contrast point, and uh, leave my put my box once again. My not my box, but this little crosshairs type thing. Put that back on your uh, your source, and then you're gonna to want to let it analyze forward again. It's gonna start going through, getting all your frames. I'm um, pressing the wrong button. Okay, analyze forward. It will do it, and it will track properly. Now that, but your point will stay on the light. 
But now, as you see, as it gets closer, there starts to be quite a bit of like the as the car changes in rotation, this is going to start to mess it up because this is going to start to move at a different speed than this. So I'm going to go ahead and take my box and move it back over to where the light is supposed to be. Oops. Move it back over where the light is supposed to be. And then um, I'm going to take this little pointy thing and put it back in the center. So yeah. Um, now we're going to want to go ahead and analyze forward again. It's going to do its thing. And it starts to get a little bonky around here because uh, the light is like crazy. Yeah, as you, see, as you can see, it starts to move. First of all, it starts to move a lot faster and a lot more than the box allows for it to. But um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to where it messes up. So you're just going to want to keep doing this until you get a proper track. So I'll be back to you once this is done tracking. All right, so now that we for sure have everything done, uh, everything's tracked properly, we're going to go ahead and press Shift, Control, Alt, Y, make a new null object, or I don't know what it is on Mac, but you can go up here to new. Uh, and make a null object and uh, we're gonna press edit target make sure our null object is selected here press ok and then press uh, make sure tracker one is uh, chosen here and we're gonna wanna press apply uh, apply dimensions both x and y and we're gonna press ok so now our null object should stick to that point that we just previously tracked throughout the scene so as you can see it sticks to throughout the shot now, what we're going to do next here is we're going to go into, we're going to make a new layer. Uh, so, uh, what is it, Control Y, I think? Yeah, okay, sorry, everything's opening down here because I used to use a 4K monitor. And we're going to just call this uh, Flare uh, Right. So this, is the, this is the right, or at least it's our right side of the car. So we're going to call it Flare Right, um, once again. It doesn't really matter what color, but I just like to make it black because it looks nicer right uh, it's on the thing and press OK. Make sure it's the same size as your comp and then uh, OK. Um, now, what we're going to go ahead and do is go into optical flares and uh, we can go ahead and choose a flare. Now, I personally uh, I don't really care what flare it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a conspiracy. And uh, let's look for a cool anamorphic ish looking flare. Um, this one looks pretty nice, FDA. No, no never mind, I, I take that back. We're gonna go ahead and just use this one. This is just a flare that I use. You can use any flare you want. And press OK. So now that's there. Um, so this the screen. And uh, yeah, now, we're, oops, sorry, don't do that. Don't do it, I just did. Set it to screen. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take the position, X, Y, we're gonna alt click and it will open it up down here and we're gonna alt click the uh, keyframe for the position X and Y and take the pick whip tool right here and parent this to null one. So now, uh, okay, control, don't, don't do that, sorry. So now that we have the pick whip tool selected here, we're gonna go ahead into null one, open up, transform and see the position. We're going to want to take the pick whip tool here and parent it to the position of null one. So now this flare does in fact follow null one throughout the shot. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and do our our stuff. So I'm going to make the flare a little bit more blue because you know I like to do blue flares. So I'm going to make our flare really really blue actually. And we're going to make it uh, bigger, because it's going to be a big light, and brighter. And, uh, yeah, I like that. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too big. Or maybe it's a little bit too bright. No, it's not too bright. It is, I think, too big. So I'm going to scale that to the right size. And um, so now that's, that's the basic idea of uh, what you're going to be doing through this tutorial. So you do that for both lights. You make another tracking point and uh, do that for the other light. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I also added one for this back light here. I added a third tracking point and I made the flare red. Um, but yeah, pretty much just wash, rinse, and repeat to do that for every single light in this footage. Um, and that's all 
it is. It's all it is. All right, so now I'm going to show you how you would do this for um, without the plug-in optical flares. Now uh, I'm going to so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the layer flare right. Now what you would do is I would make a new. I haven't done this in a while, so bear with me. I'd make a new uh, layer. Uh, call it. Mm, uh, I don't know flare right flare two. And uh, make sure it's the comp size. And what we're gonna do is effects and presets. Um, I think there's like a built-in lens flare. Yeah, there's a bit a built-in lens flare that comes with After Effects. So we're gonna want to drop it onto Right Flare Two. And as you can see, there's a there's a few of them. Uh, there's 35 millimeter prime, 50 to 300 zoom, and 105 prime. I like this one the best, but uh, cause it's white. But you can use the other ones. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use 105 millimeter prime. So we'll set our uh, layer to screen. By the way, um, this little toggle switches thing down here changes. I didn't know this until like a month into using After Effects. So yeah, just uh, that's a little tip, quick tip. Um, set it to screen. And uh, yeah, now you can see our flares over our video. So now we have to do the same thing. We have to, um, how do you, uh, how do you do this? Oops. How might one do this? Do you do it here? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you're gonna wanna um, alt, press alt and uh, click the flare center. And once again, it's just really the same principle. You're gonna wanna pick, take the pick whip swirly tool here and parent this to uh, the position of uh, the first null that we made. And uh, once again, our flare sticks to where it's supposed to be the right way. As you can see, uh, these elements over here and these elements over here, they all kind of like pass by each other as a flare is supposed to. Um, if, you, if you do it the wrong way and you just move around the, like just take the layer and move it around, as you can see, like these elements, the other play elements, they all just kind of move in a weird kind of way. So yeah, um, but once you do it the right way, which I've just taught you, this is how you do it. And, uh, and this is how you do it inside of After Effects. You can change the flare up if you want uh, and make it a little bit brighter. And uh, you can actually see it cross by um, now remember how I earlier I said that like it's gonna go off screen and I don't need it so what you would do here is I would go into the um to the lens flare I would uh, go under the brightness of the flare I'd keyframe the brightness at the beginning to be a hundred or whatever 146 whatever it is right now and uh, once it gets to about here I'd keyframe it at a hundred again uh, press another keyframe and then I would, um, once it gets to about here, I just throw it down to, uh, once I stop tracking it, I just throw it down to zero. And now, as you can see, the flare stays at 100% brightness through here. And as the flare goes off screen, it just kind of fades out and it's not there anymore because it gets really far away from the camera. We can move that over a little bit if you want. Yeah. And it just kind of fades out because it's not in the camera anymore. And that's it. <coughs> um... So yeah, that's that's all there is to uh, tracking a lens flare onto footage, and it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a lens flare. So I mean, it's not like a like crazy light. It's just you know, just a, it's just a light source. It's not like anything has to be super sharp or anything. It's just you know the lens flare. So that's really uh, all there is to it. That's how I do it. Um, that's how everyone should do it. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching this video. <coughs> um, if you uh, if you liked it. Or if it helped you, uh, please you know leave a like or you know a comment or subscribe. It really you know helps out this channel. You know I'm trying to build, trying to help uh, you know uh, filmmakers, young filmmakers like myself. So um yeah, thanks for watching and uh, that's it. <laughs>